Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the idea of diagonalizability of a matrix. We say that an n by n matrix A is diagonalizable if it is similar to a diagonal matrix. And I'll write diag lambda 1 lambda n to be the matrix dij with entries lambda j if i is equal to j and 0 if i is not equal to j. Okay, so in other words, on the main diagonal, when i and j are the same, you just get the lambda i value in that diagonal entry over there. That's what a diagonal matrix is, right? And of course, let's recall what it means to be similar, right? So recall that A is similar to B if and only if there is an invertible matrix P such that a is equal to P inverse B P, like that, okay? So, let's, so I'm going to say a theorem about these diagonalizable matrices. So this is the main theorem about diagonalizability. So theorem, A is diagonalizable if and only if A has a basis, there's a basis, of eigenvectors of A. Okay? Okay? So let's prove this theorem. So here's the proof. All right, so if A is diagonalizable, implies that A is equal to P inverse diag of lambda 1 through lambda n, p. And by applying p to both of these things over here, so I can say is the following. So now the question becomes is, what can I say about these, um, about these p's over here? Well, I can apply p inverse to both sides over here. This says that a p inverse is going to be what? By applying p inverse over there and over there, is equal to p inverse diag of lambda 1 through lambda n, right? And that says that this matrix P inverse, so if P inverse, if P inverse is the matrix over here, V1 in the first column, all the way down to Vn, then those vectors form a basis of n-dimensional space. Is a basis of Rn. And according to this, over here, A of VI is equal to lambda I VI, right? In other words, um, this VI is an eigenvector of A, and so the eigenvectors of A form a basis, right? So in other words, if you're diagonalizable, then your eigenvectors form a basis, right? So VI, this implies, hence, VI, let's say V1, V2, VN are eigenvectors of A. Great. Now suppose that, what? Suppose that there's a base of eigenvectors. If there's a basis of eigenvectors I'll just change the notation over here. Say U1 through UN. That implies that the matrix U over here, which is U1 all the way down to un is invertible, right? Because it's a ba it's a uh, it's a basis, right? Is invertible, and they're eigenvectors. So I have the equation that a of u 
is equal to u times diag of lambda 1, lambda n, right? And that says what? That says that a is equal to u diag lambda 1 through lambda n, u inverse. And that says that a is similar. This is equivalent to saying that a is similar. A is similar to the diagonal matrix like that. So diagonalizability is equivalent to there being a basis of eigenvectors over there. It's important to keep three, th three examples in the back of your mind when you're talking about these things over here, right? So for example, this matrix over here is not diagonalizable as you can check. That's a good exercise to check. Right? Because it's clear that the eigenvalues of this are zero, but there's only one, the kernel of this matrix, the zero is the only eigenvalue, but the kernel of this matrix is one dimensional, right? So in other words, there's not a basis of eigenvectors that correspond to zero, which is the only eigenvalue of this matrix over here, right? Whereas if I have this matrix over here, well, the identity matrix is clearly diagonalizable, right? Even though it has two of the same eigenvalues, just one and one, the dimension of the kernel of this of identity minus identity is just going to be two-dimensional, right? So in other words, play with these, is, of, is, is of course diagonal, it's a diagonal matrix. It's not only diagonalizable, it's in fact diagonal, right? So think of very specific examples of two by two cases. So you don't need, necessarily need distinct eigenvalues, but in further videos we'll see that if the eigenvalues are distinct, then you're going to get linear independence and you'll actually be able to construct a basis in the case when there are distinct eigenvalues, right? But the eigenvalues don't necessarily need to be distinct in order to be diagonalizable. You just need to have a very robust the, the dimension, the algebraic dimension of the null space has to be equal to the geometric dimension of the null space. In other words, there has to be a consistency in order to construct a full basis of eigenvectors for the underlying space in order to be diagonalizable. Thank you very much.